Always honor your elders, amen. Because they didn't been through what you going through and can tell you how to make it through. Come on, give God praise for them. Amen. Exodus 33. Let's look at verse 1. Can I treat a while today? Amen. Keep your Bible open. Don't go to sleep on your Bible. I hope you got your phone charged up and your tablet that it might not die in the midst of the word. Amen. Look at verse 1 of 33. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Leave this place, you and the people you brought up out of Egypt. And go up to the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I will send an angel before you and drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. He said, go on up to the land flowing with milk and honey, y'all could go home after that right there if you can get it that in your spirit, amen. I need us to pray over the topic, the pursuit of divine purpose. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to pursue your purpose starting the day. Come on, get in their face, tell them, I said pursue, pursue, pursue your purpose. Pursue, you got one, pursue your purpose. Now give him a victory shout as if you've already walked into your promise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You may be seated. You and I are people of purpose. Say, I'm a person of purpose. And we're all pursuing our purpose. How, how do I know that? Because all of us engage in what sociologists and developmental theorists call meaning making. All of us are trying to make sense out of this life trying to make sense out of this world, trying to make sense out of what we're going through, and we seek to discover our raison d'etre, our reason for being, what in the world God created us for. So all of us ask questions like, who am I? Why am I here? What is it that I'm called to do? I know what other folks are called to do, but what am I called? Am I on the right track? We say stuff like, I know there has to be more to life than what I'm doing right now. Anybody else ever said that to God? Tell your neighbor, I know that's right there. There has to be more. And, and let me help you. You're not the only one asking this question. The, the, this is not simply for the young or the innocent or the confused. All of us ask this question as, as we seek to discover who and what we are. And here's why we ask these questions of reassessment. Because no matter how good things are, no matter how challenging things are, this is true for all of us. Everything must and will change. Tell somebody everything must change. Come on, y'all. Seasons change. People change, we change, situations change, and life will put you through some changes. Anybody been through one or two changes, maybe in just the last few days? To talk, come on, to look at your name and say, have I? I I've, I've been through some changes, and, 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 and some of us, what they do is these changes move us into a place of what folks call crisis decisions. In other words, you find yourself in a crisis having to make a decision. You're at the fork in the road. Am I going to continue on this path of insanity? Or am I going to make a decision that's going to catapult me into my destiny? You got to make a choice every day you get up, whether you're going to walk in the mundane or whether you're going to walk in the miracles of God. Somebody ought to holler, I've made up my mind that miracles are for me. Somebody give him praise that miracles are for you. You come to a place where you got to make a decision. And, and in our text, the people of God, the children of God, the Israelites have come to a place of decision. They're at the foot of Mount Sinai, also called Mount Horeb, and they're in a life crisis. 
They got to make a decision as to whether they're going to serve the Lord thy God or whether they're going to serve their circumstances. And can I use a bit of cinematic reverse flash? You know how you go to the movies and they show you the end of the movie and then they flip you back and start it. How the heck did they get here in the first place? Well, the children of Israel have been delivered from bondage in Egypt. Uh, uh, they have crossed the Red Sea and, and God has demonstrated his power uh, by destroying and drowning Pharaoh's army in the Red Sea. God is leading them through the desert and he's doing some miraculous stuff. He's, he's providing for them a manna from Panera bread in the morning and, and quail in the evening from Chipotle. Y'all ain't hearing me. And miraculous, he, he pops water out of a rock to wash it all down because whatever you need, God can provide it. All you got to do is go along for the ride. Tell your neighbor, God is providing everything you need. Even when the enemy comes up against you, the Amalekites had the nerve to come up against the Israelites after God delivered them from Egypt, and God miraculously whips the Amalekites right before their eyes with Joshua fighting in the desert and Moses standing up on a hill looking like he ain't doing nothing but praying and God miraculously takes care of the Israelites' enemy. Good God Almighty. God was on their side. Somebody holler, God is on my side. God provides for them. He leads them in the wilderness. God employs a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. God didn't need the power of Kam Ed because all power is in his hand. Whatever you need, God can deliver it to you. Can, can I help you? He was with them and he brought them through some stuff. Let me help you with number one so you can hurry up and go home. You know that God has a divine purpose for you. Uh, based upon what he's brought you through. Because God has brought you through some stuff in your life, that's an indication that he has some stuff to take you to in your life. Y'all praised him earlier. How many of y'all God has brought you through some crazy stuff? How many of you he's brought you through some dangers, seen and unseen? How many of y'all God has healed you from some stuff? How many of you God has delivered you from some stuff? Do I have anybody in the balcony that God provided you some stuff when you didn't have no money anywhere? Has God messed with your enemies for messing with you? Do, do I have anybody who will testify that had it not been for God on your side, you don't know where you'd be. Do I have anybody in the choir that would give him praise because he made a way out of no way? Do I have anybody in the middle section that are giving praise that God, they left you, but then God blessed you? with Y'all need to give God some praise up in here. That's three people telling them you got purpose. You got purpose. You don't look like what you've been through, but he brought you through to bring you to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, God. God, God says... I got purpose for your life. Sometimes the enemy make you think you're going through too much to have purpose. No, baby, that you going through, what you going through means that God is just warming up in the bullpen about to take you to your next level. Divine purpose. Come on, stay in your Bible. Over in chapter 19, if you turn over there, God said these people have purpose. And verse 1, if you read it later when you get home, it says, the people came to the desert. It was only three months after being delivered from Egypt. Somebody holler three months. <laughs> Moses is called up to the mountain of God. And God gives him a message to the people at New Faith. He says in chapter 19, verse 3, he says, this is what you are to say to the house of Jacob, New Faith in Matson. What you are to tell the people of Israel, you yourselves have seen what I did in Egypt and how I carried you, good God, on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Y'all don't hear me. God says, you yourself have seen how I took you through the middle passage as a people. You yourself has seen how I delivered you from Jim Crow for being strange fruit hanging on a tree to bringing you to the White House. You yourself have 
seen how I brought your family from the backwoods and the projects to a cul-de-sac in the suburbs. You yourself have seen when you couldn't get a job and now you in middle management and somebody else is reporting to you. You yourself, y'all don't hear me, I, I, I brought you and carried you on eagle's wings. Y'all don't understand. God knew that the children of Israel could handle this imagery of eagle's wings because that there at the foot of Sinai was known as eagle country where they were used to seeing these big majestic birds with their wide wingspan. And when their eaglets were just about at the time of learning how to fly, the mama eagle would stir them up and take them over the side of the crevice and drop them off of the mountain. And just when them little eaglets was flapping their wings, about to hit the ground, old mama eagle would come down, swoosh, and, and then the baby would fall and light right on mama's back, on mama's wings, and mama would carry that little eagle up 90 feet higher and drop him and start the process all over again. See, y'all blaming the devil on God's work. Sometimes it ain't the devil that makes the bottom fall out. Daddy makes the bottom fall out. But daddy got enough power that when the bottom falls out and you're just about to hit rock bottom, old eagle daddy goes swoosh and picks you up and carries you to the next level. Is there anybody here ready to go to the next level in God? Somebody ought to flap their wings because you ain't doing the flying. Daddy's really doing the flying. And he's carrying you to himself. You trying to get to a destination, daddy say, I'm trying to carry you to myself. Because if I can get you to trust me, I can take you higher than you've ever been in your life. Somebody ought to holler, I'm going higher. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. God said, don't you see where I brought you through? Don't you see what I brought you through? Don't you see I brought you out of that bad relationship? Don't, don't you see you were jacked up with drugs and now you in your right mind and got the nerve to be ministering to other folk? Don't you see you used to be a whole, now you're living in peace with God and holding your peace? You ain't hearing me. You done got to another. Y'all act like you ain't never been through nothing up here. If we told the real testimony, all of us would be weeping on the floor before God. But because we know how to pray, Pretend we can't get no deliverance up in the house. Do I have any ex somebody who don't mind giving God some praise? Or an ex somebody who don't mind giving God glory? An ex somebody in the balcony that glad that you can put the white flag in and come to church. He says, and with all I've done for you. All I ask you to do in verse 5 of chapter 19 is fully obey me. Oh, shoot. Divine purposes are only apprehended by those who walk in full obedience. Somebody say, I obey. God says, obey me fully. Remain faithful to me. Obey me fully. Show me your fidelity. And not only will I drive you into your destiny, but I will give you your divine identity. Oh, uh -uh, y'all don't hear me. See, look, look. Ain't no need in making it to the palace if you still got pit mentality. Ain't no need in moving to a big house in the suburbs if you're still acting like you ghetto. You ain't hear me. Ain't, ain't, ain't no need in doing all that if you're still parking your car on the front lawn. You got a big dog barking on the porch. Ain't no need in going to the next level if you're still living in your mind like you in the gutter. Y'all don't hear me sick. The problem is folks have programmed your tapes and you don't know who you really are. And God says, if you obey me, I'll tell you who you are. You don't need a man to know who you are. You don't need no more money to know who you are. You don't need a seat to know who you are. And you don't need stanky friends to know who you are. If you know who you are, they want to be friends with you. But because you don't know who you are, you're begging to get in with them. 
Let God tell you who you are by your obedience. Verse 5, verse 9, he said, now if you obey me, new faith, fully, and keep my covenant, he said, then out of all them jokers you're trying to hang with, you will be my treasured possession. Y'all looking at me, look at the Bible. He says, although the whole earth is mine, he said, you will be for me a kingdom of priests. Girl, you a priest and a holy nation, a holy na Wait, wait, wait. He says, listen to me. Fidelity begets divine identity that moves you into your destiny. He says, you'll be a treasured possession. You're, can't nobody buy you. You already too expensive. He said, you're a treasured possession. He said, I'm a kingdom of priests. You don't have to be ordained. Before you came out of your mama's womb, he called you a royal priest, a holy nation. Even though I was a whole, today I'm a holy nation because I'm in Christ Jesus. Y'all need to hear me up in here. As a people, you got to say who he says that you are. I wish I had somebody who repeat after me I am his treasured possession say it again I am his treasured possession I am his priest I am his holy nation say it again I am his holy nation I am his treasured possession how many of y'all really believe that how many, how many of you really believe you're a holy nation? I, I got about 75% of y'all. The rest of y'all, hurry up because you're messing up your own identity. You need to just say it whether you believe it right now or not. Get it in your spirit. Tell it, I, I am your treasured possession. Man, you, you got to believe that. If you look at chapter 19, verse 8, it said, The people all responded together. We will do everything the Lord has said. Tell your name, I'm going to do everything he said. Some of y'all like, I ain't even gonna lie, I ain't turn to come on, try. <laughs> so the people are clear as to what requires. Check God out. God himself starts talking from the mountain. He says, I don't need an interpreter. I don't need a go-between. I don't need nobody to speak in tongues and pray for the interpretation so other people, come on, turn to Exodus 20, verse 2. This is where we call it the Ten Commandments. Come on, come on, stay in your Bible. Verse 2, God says, let me get this first clear. He says, I am the Lord your God. I'm the one who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He says, you will have no other gods before me. Thank you, God. He says, you shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water below. You shall not bow down to, to them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God. I punish the children for the sin of the father, that ain't fair, to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but, somebody say, but, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commands. Somebody ought to give God praise if you're on the side of the thousand generations who keep his command. God says, let me be clear about my commandments. You can read the rest of them when you get home. God was clear giving the people clarity about their divine covenant, their identity, and their blueprint of how to walk in their destiny. And look, check this out. But God was speaking directly. God said, I don't need nobody to speak for me. I choose to use people to speak for me. But I can speak all by myself directly to you. But, but if you look over at verse 18, you'll see that the people start trembling in chapter 20 at the sound and the lightning and the thunder. In other words, they couldn't handle God straight, no chaser. They couldn't handle God speaking directly. So they was like, huh, huh, huh. that's too much God coming. Y'all don't hear me there? There's some folk, we so spooky, we don't want God to speak directly because we want to act like we don't know. Y'all don't hear me? But God said, and so the people say, oh, look, uh, uh, Mo, verse 21, Mo, you going up. You going up, you talk to God, and uh, we'll just kind of hang back because we can't handle all this. So from chapters 21 through chapters 31, God gives Moses all of this good download. He tells Moses how to 
they're supposed to treat one another, how they're supposed to treat employees, laws, and justice, and festivals. And, and about chapter 24, if you flip there, about verse 12, Moses goes up a little higher so that God can give him the laws and the commands. Moses enters the cloud where God is. And in 24, 18, God starts telling him about how to worship. The next chapter, he's telling him about offerings and talking about the dimensions of the tabernacle and how you're supposed to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, what to do with the lampstand and, and what to do with the lever and, and, and the garments and the Sabbath. In chapter 31, verse 18, God gets the two tablets to him, and the tablets of stone, and he inscribes the words by his own finger. Check it out, y'all. While God is imparting all of this revelational download to Moses, the people seem to think that Moses has been gone for too long. Look at it, 32 verse 1, chapter 32 verse 1. It says, when the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron, the, the assistant pastor, and said, man, come on, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses, who brought us up out of Egypt. We don't know what has happened to him. What, what in the world are they talking about, bruh? With all that God has delivered them from, they want to trade God in for something that they can build themselves. God then gave them water from a brook. God then blessed them and beat up their enemies. And they got to know what in the world? Because Moses was gone too long. Because their leader was gone. Y'all know what happened. Y'all done read this story. They, they all ate. Aaron, the priest and the brother of Moses tells them, give me your earrings, give me your rings, give me all your jewelry, and I'm going to make a golden calf so that y'all will have some. Are you kidding me? They made a golden calf? The people bowed down and began to worship the golden calf. Chapter 32, verse 4, these jokers said, these are your gods, O Israel. Israel, who brought you out of Egypt? You crazy joker. God just brought you out, and you're going to look at a moo moo and say that the moo moo delivered you from some stuff. They bowed down. Verse 5 and 6 of 32 says that they broke out with offerings. They took the money that God had blessed them with when they came out of Egypt and invested all their money in a golden calf that they made with the stuff that God gave them in the first place, y'all. And hear me. Why? Because our, their leader was gone too long. What was the problem, Revy Rev? Problem was, they couldn't see God. They couldn't see their leader. And they didn't know how to wait on God. Some of y'all right now sitting there fidgeting and saying, he ain't preaching like usual. I got to go to turn all this Bible. He taking too long. Keep, keep me awake. See, you don't know how to wait on God. See, your miracle might be coming at the end of the whole thing, but some of us can't even wait for the benediction because we don't want to wait in line on the way out. Y'all don't hear me. What you don't understand and what they didn't understand is that it was only a test. Tell your neighbor it's only a test. <laughs> Moses was only gone for 40 days and 40 nights. 40 in the Bible is the number of testing. <laughs> Jesus was in the wilderness praying and fasting for 40 days and night, and then the enemy came to test him. 